Okay, no. it's not really on fire. That was just a setup. But I have been having some trouble with this thing. To explain, we're going to have to go look at some more cones. Remember these cones? This is what I'm talking about. Self-supporting pyrometric cone. This is a number six cone. Cone six. And to refresh your memory, this, uh, this one's broken, but this, when fired up to a sufficient amount of heat work, that's a, a high temperature over a certain amount of time, it turns into this. This is out of the pottery kiln. Cone six. So it changes to white, it becomes all shiny and smooth, and it kind of arches down in a sad droop. So I took this, this uh, oven, I stuck a couple of these in there, told it to fire to cone six, and this happened. Yeah, they're, 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 they're gray, but they're not white. They certainly didn't droop, and then I dropped this one and broke it. So that's my bad. Uh, one cool thing you can see, though, if it shows up, this one, I set this one up off the bottom, and I set this one right on the bottom. And I don't know how well it shows up, but the bottom of this, still kind of pink compared to that one. Top is a little more gray, bottom is pink. That means the bottom of this didn't fire quite as hot, because it still retains some of this pink color. And that is why I never set anything on the bottom of a kiln. I always set it on a shelf that's elevated up off the bottom just a little bit. Because this, even though it wasn't hot enough, it still showed a temperature gradient from the top to the bottom. Very interesting to get that in a color. Really hope that's going to show up better on the camera than it does on the viewfinder thingy, but oh well. Just, just trust me. Just trust me. Everyone says put everything up off the bottom just a little bit and do it. Cool discovery aside, that wasn't good. So, I, this, this thingy in this book has something about adjusting the cone fire settings. You can basically crank the temperature up, but only for the cone setting, the, the cone fire. Uh, you can also crank the thermocouple up, I think up to 45 degrees. I wasn't going to mess with that. I was just trying to see if I could make the cone work. So I cranked it up the maximum amount it would let me, which I think was only 20 degrees. It's Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, because this is America. And I got this. See? It's not really isn't any different. It's still not white, it's still not curving over, it's, it's, it's lame, it's terrible. So, you might notice a difference. I originally had this thermocouple poking through that hole. So, I put a new hole here, stuck it in there, uh, jammed some, some ceramic wool in there to, to plug up the hole, and I thought, well, since I brought the, uh, the, the business end of the thermocouple away from this wall, it was right against this wall, Maybe having it poking out kind of in the middle-ish area will, will give me a more, a more even reading or whatever. So then I tried it again, and I got, drum roll please, this again. Same kind of crap. And keep in mind, each one of these tests takes a full day to do. If I make it do a cone six as fast as it'll go, it's like nine hours up to the top, and then it free fall cools for like another 12 hours. So like... Each one of these represents a full day of failure. So you can see why it's been taking me so long to get this thing figured out. And on this one, this one, when the, when the controller said it was at 2300 degrees, I decided I would just open the lid. You know, see what's up. Because you can get a sense of temperature based on how much something glows. Like if you're watching the foundry videos, you can see that uh, a lot of the metal is glowing. It's emitting light because it's so hot. It's emitting that energy. Uh, and it, the color and the temperature, people say you can guesstimate temperatures from color, it's not very accurate, but 2300 degrees better be freaking glowing. It better be glowing white hot. And uh, I popped the lid open and it was black. Like, it was hot in there, you know, plenty hot, but it wasn't glowing hot. So I was easily like a thousand degrees minimum too cold. And uh, you, you can't just adjust that out of it. So that's clearly, I had another problem. So I started paging through this, and there's all these settings and junk. Most of this I haven't quite read yet. And I decided, you know, why not? I'm going to check the setting for the thermocouple. This thing can take four different kinds of thermocouple. It comes with a Type K. It comes set for Type K. I saw that it was set for Type K, and I didn't want to mess with it because Type K is what I had. Uh, when I checked it, it wasn't set for Type K. It was set for some other one. So I had inadvertently, in my fumbling around with these buttons, set it for some other kind of thermocouple and basically screwed myself over for all of this time. Read the manual is important, sure, but double check all the settings, even the ones that are obviously not going to be wrong, because they might be wrong. Tried it again, and bingo. Got a white, got a curved cone. 
Uh, it curved a little bit, a hair more than this one, you know, but I, I still had the, I think I still had the cone fire temperature cranked up another 20 degrees, but that's, that's not a significantly, that's, this is not an over-fired cone. It's a, uh, they, they like lay flat. So this, okay, success. Temperature, success. I'm tired and angry at this point, but I'm also happy that it worked. So cones, goodbye. Another one of the things I did was just drop a bunch of this kiln furniture in here. These are ceramic. They're pretty heavy, but they're very substantial. They're very high temperature. They're designed to hold a lot of weight, like a whole bunch of pottery weight on top while everything's at like 2400 degrees and not sag or any of that. But this is basically just adding thermal mass. So it takes a little longer to heat up, takes a little longer to cool down because it, you know, this is like, it's a heat sink. It just stores a bunch of mass. It's, it's pretty heavy too. It's actual mass. I didn't do anything. I tried that before fixing the thermocouple. But just as a quick look, how did everything hold up? To my eyes, the inside has zero visible differences from before I fired it. So I fired it to about 22, well, like 2250, 2280 in there somewhere, well under 23, 2400. And these, these elements are from a kiln that's rated to go up to 2400 degrees regularly. That would be cone 10. 10 is a higher number than 6, so 10 is hotter than 6. 10 is a, a more heat work. I don't know why I'm doing this, like I'm Italian talking about some delicious food. But I, I suppose you can make some delicious food in here. You can make a very precisely cooked meatloaf. But yeah, this is held up fine. After I did the, the actual high temperature firing, this changed color. We got the heat gradient, you know, the, the heat bluing and purpling and, and strawing. And back here, remember these, this side has uh, ceramic wool under there. This side doesn't, it's just the bare brick. So this got heat blued. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise, like, it looks fine. It's just, it's blue, it's still shiny. It didn't get all rusty, crusty. I think underneath here, see under there, it got kind of, kind of crusty. So there it got a lot hotter. I mean, obviously it's insulated and it's closer to the edge. So that might, uh, that might end up being an issue. Then again, this, my foundry furnace, is way worse like way more rotten and it hasn't had any problems at all. So I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. Down here we have the lid and this whole setup worked pretty well with a slight exception. This is no longer as tight. I can wiggle these ever so slightly and if these can be wiggled around that means this whole band thing is probably loose. So I might want to tighten that. Uh, I'm probably just going to add more, more security there. You know, maybe another couple loops of that, and uh, maybe some more, maybe something a little more substantial. Let me know what you think. Because I, I don't want these to be able to wiggle, because if they wiggle, they can crack and they, they might be brittle. Another thing I've heard, up to, to temperatures that I was going at, these bricks, over time, the more uses you do, they'll shrink slightly. So anything that fits tight, after being over a couple thousand degrees for some number of hours, it'll be a little wiggly. It'll, it'll shrink just a little bit. So that, this might be a, a continually tightened system. I don't know yet. If you notice, I didn't put any satanite on this. You would think there's a very hair gap all in here, and that's fine. That's totally fine. Here's the, here's the actual like commercial kiln that you would expect to be good. And you see those bricks, they're coated in something, but like, look at this. That's way more than a little crack. That's a big honking hole. And these don't really fit. You know, they're, they're kind of wiggly, wobbly, so, so a little bit of airflow, you know, that's, that's not a big deal. It's supposed to be an oxidizing environment anyway. My wiring out here is showing no signs of overheating. Uh, these, are, these wires are from, these wires uh, are used, we use them for uh, heating elements on, on dryers. So like they're ultra thick, very, very, very thick, high temperature insulation, and these are all metal crimp connectors anyway, so I, I fully expect it to be able to handle the temperature. So, what's next in this rambly, talky episode? Well, this looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Those colors? Yeah, I've, I've been talking to people on the Discord, and as it turns out, you can kind of, you can kind of like, if you have some steel, you can like set it to go to a certain temperature and it'll turn this color. And a little hot, it'll go purple. A little hotter, it'll go blue. And then it'll kind of go sky blue. And then it goes this kind of gray stuff. And then it goes black, and then we're all sad, and it's all ruined. But but this this blue is kind of cool. There's something called heat bluing. And I think that 
would be a fantastic test of the uh, precision of this this little oven at low temperatures because you know heating up pottery is great and all but I mean that's that's why I got that thing so uh, what I really want is the precision to be able to do stuff like heat treating and to that end I have this piece of steel I've, I've ground the the mill scale off of one side it's quarter inch mild steel not not too exciting a friend of mine was building a, a Jeep bumper over here and he left this because it was just an off cut uh, oh oh yeah right I also fired this this is up to cone 5 it's it's a bowl it's it's got cracks in it though well the cracks were from when it when it dried they were already cracked so uh, yeah I just wanted to test it out it worked it's it's a bowl what, what can I say so I'm gonna take this uh, this piece of mild steel as a test set it to go to the temperature that the interwebs tells me will make it blue and uh, next time we're gonna see if it is indeed blue uh, and then we're probably gonna do the uh, reduction fire thing I'm gonna do the reduction firing mentioned before using propane and uh, I will do a better job explaining that next time but uh, we're not done yet today we're not done don't don't sign off I'm gonna leave all the kiln furniture in here just gonna set it remember how I said it I told you don't set it on the bottom set it like up well I'm gonna do that I'm gonna use this furniture it's called furniture I know it's not like tables and chairs so don't make fun of it or make fun of it I don't care I'm not the boss of you do what you want I'm gonna set it there raise up off the bottom like four inches uh, kind of middle-ish there's the thermocouple and uh, we're gonna set it okay I have you down here I am setting it up to heat blue I set it to go using this nifty manual here set it to go up to 575 heat up pretty quickly hold there for like 20 minutes and then cool off I'm gonna put a chart up on the screen you can see uh, the different colors supposedly anyway according to the interwebs that you can get with uh, with heat to heat blue stuff uh, but what I want you to see here see the run light cycling on and off and the numbers going up that's the thermocouple reading this doesn't like slowly heat up like many many things that that use heat they cycle on and off so they go full on full off and it's going like it was going like 50 percent of the time what this thing seems to do is cycle on and off and then wait and see what the temperature does and then it'll start cycling again on and off and it was running well there it was running about 50 percent you know a couple seconds on a couple seconds off something like that and that's that's pretty typical it seemed to be running about 50 percent of the time when I was doing the really really hot stuff and that's good that means I have I have enough power it's it's able to heat up as quickly as it wanted to now I'm asking it to heat up a little quicker but it's still spending more time not running than it is running I have it set to go uh, to heat up at a thousand degrees per hour which is quite a lot quite a lot of heat remember it's only going to 500 so it's gonna more like it's gonna heat up 500 in a half hour and then hold at 575 for a while and then it'll go free fall cooling and we will see what it looks like sorry this one was a bit more talky talky and a little less working on something but man this stuff this uh, when one test firing takes a whole day uh, it, it takes a long time to work out problems work out your problems and then figure it out it'll be even harder to like fine-tune anything so uh, yeah hopefully it works pretty good next time we're going to uh, see if this heat bluing worked and uh, look at how we're going to turn the atmosphere into a reduction atmosphere instead of an oxidizing one <laughs>